Are you a Google Photos user? Chances are, if you have a Android phone or a Google phone, you've got pictures in the Google Photos app. But how does Google Photos compare to other photo management softwares out there? Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt, a photo estate planner at Pixology. We are your go-to experts in evaluating photo saving apps, software tools, and we help provide motivation so that you keep on top of managing all those pictures that keep accumulating on your phone and other devices. We're talking about Google Photos today, and this is the next in a series of videos I'm doing reviewing the different photo management software options you have out there. So let's start with the two important things that I stress on each of these videos. Number one, you need a digital home for all of your pictures, one digital home, and that's usually gonna be some photo management software. The second thing that's important is you need to use that program routinely, like at least monthly, if not weekly. It helps you remember what you were doing in your pictures previously and the tips and tricks of using the program. Before we dive in, please be sure to stick with me to the end of this video. Google Photos is part of a very big tech company and I think it warrants a few additional thoughts for me on the subject. So we're gonna dive into Google Photos on my computer. I could use my phone, but I find it easier to work in the Google Photos app on my computer. Right now, we're looking at google.com and I've logged into my training account and I'm gonna click on these nine circles, scroll down to the Photos app and this will bring us right in to the photos view of my collection. The left hand column is a panel that you can choose how to look at your pictures and a few other options. So in the photos view, we can scroll down. If we are on the right hand side, you get a timeline and you can click on the different years and immediately be taken to those dates, which is kind of nice. In the Explore tab, this is where Google has done some work for you. It's identified all of these people that are in my pictures. It's also identified dogs and weddings, and I didn't have to do anything. There's a Sharing tab. If you have received a link from other people or you've shared photos, you can see what's in there. Google has a print store where you can make photo books and order prints. Under the library there, you can see there's favorites. So if you have put a star on a photo, your photos will appear here and that's kind of nice. Then there is the albums view and this is where your albums would appear if you have uh, apps on your phone. Sometimes they'll make albums for you like Instagram I've seen and others. Under Utilities, there's a few options in there you might want to take a look at for creating movies and animation. Lastly, I want to show you the storage options here. Google gives you 15 gigabytes free, and if you need more space, it's just $1.99 a month for 100 gigabytes. So let's go back. There is a couple more things in the upper right area here. Upload if you wanted to upload photos from your computer so that they were all in Google Photos. That's how you would do that. Under settings, you definitely want to check this area out. This is where you tell Google what quality of photo you want to save. We just recommend saving the original photo. No need to compress it. Storage is um, not that expensive and it's your memories. Go ahead and, and save the original. All right, when I review these photo management programs, there are four essential features I think a program should have. And the first one is being able to organize your photos by albums or folders. You can see here we have albums and it's easy to create a new album or you can simply go to your photos and scroll down. I'll just find a, a couple here. 
we have from the 1980s and I'm just selecting a few. We are going to click the plus sign in the top right corner and add to an album. I'll have to create the new album, 1980s photos. And we'll click the check mark. It's done. And we'll go back. There's my 1980s album. One thing I can't do is I can't tell in Google Photos in the All Photos view which pictures are not in an album. So that's a little troublesome to me. For the purposes of the review, I will count this as a yes. Google Photos allows you to organize your pictures by albums. The second feature that is essential in a photo management program is the ability to edit metadata. So to do that, we're going to go look at that favorites photo I had here. So we're looking at a photo of a friend and my daughter at the Wisconsin Senior Olympics Volleyball Tournament. If I click on the eye with the circle, I get the info tab and here I can add a description and I can change the date. So let's just say for demonstration's sake, this was 1950 and I click save. That information is saved here on this photo. Let's download the photo. I'm going to click these three dots for more options. Download. And now the picture is downloading to my computer. When I look at the metadata on my computer, I see the original date the picture was taken and not the date I changed it. Also, the description I added, Molly, Mary, and Hannah, is not showing up. That means that whatever information I add to a photo in Google Photos, it's not retained when I download it. That means Google Photos does not meet my criteria of being able to edit the metadata. The third essential feature a photo management program needs to have is good backup. The backup needs to work in a way that you have a backup in the house and a backup outside of the house. So Google Photos, you may have your pictures on your phone and they're backed up in the cloud, but there's no automatic feature for the pictures to be saved to your computer. Google Photos doesn't meet my criteria. If you lose your phone and you don't have access to the internet, you don't have access to your pictures. The fourth criteria for a photo management program is I have to like using it. So when I scroll through my photos here and I, I see the interface here, I actually do like it. The pictures look colorful, the white background is clean. It's a simple interface. So from that standpoint, it gets a yes from me. So those were the four essentials. We got two yeses and two noes. Let's talk about a few other features that a photo management program can have that are helpful. With Google Photos, you can edit your pictures. And if I just click into one of these snow pictures, I'm gonna get the dog jumping here. When I shut the information tab and click these three um, sliders, it's edit and it opens a new screen. And here I have some new filters that I can use. There are more options. Here is where you can crop your picture if you like. And I'm gonna just leave it the way it is. Google Photos, you can edit. So the next helpful feature is sharing photos. All I have to do is click a picture and click on those three dots with the two lines, the share icon, and I can share away. Another feature that's helpful is facial recognition and object recognition. Now we talked about that already when I was showing you some of the features. And if we go back to explore and we look at the people, all I'll do is I'll click on my daughter's photo and here you can see all the pictures that she's in. Since we opened this view from before, Google's been working and now I've got another things category, cathedrals. Google is actively working on your photo collection, helping to find objects that are similar for you. 
Another feature that's helpful is when a program can recognize that it's importing duplicates. And I found that Google will upload a duplicate if the name is different. If it's the same name, Google doesn't upload it. There are a couple reasons why I find it hard to think about Google as a go-to photo management software. And this is what I was alluding to in the beginning of the video. In 2019, Fast Company reported that Google Photos reached 1 billion users in four years. That is staggering. Here's my two cents worth on Google. I hesitate using it for a photo management solution, partly because like the company's huge. They are an extraordinarily powerful company in a variety of ways. They tell you outright in the privacy policy that they are going through your information, your photos, to help make a better user experience for you. That means designing ads to appear that will be of interest to you and so much more. Lastly, with it being such a huge company, support is not easy. In fact, there's been articles online of people losing their photos forever. So I do hesitate about Google Photos being my go-to solution. Google Photos serves its purpose well by protecting the pictures you take with your phone up in the cloud. But after that, I'd recommend taking your pictures off your phone and putting them into a photo management program on your computer. That way you're in control of your photo collection, it's in your home, and you can feel assured that your memories are safe. What do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear if Google Photos is something that you want to use for your photo collection, or if you think there might be a better answer out there. That is it for today's review. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and we will see you the next time.